What's up, y'all? Alvin here, and these are my five favorite bass flies. These things are guaranteed to catch bass. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so like I said, these are definitely my five favorite bass flies. These aren't the only bass flies I use, and these are just sort of some representatives. Sometimes I'll have this exact same selection in different colors, but pretty much anytime I'm fishing for bass, I'm gonna be using one of these five flies. So we'll start with the bottom and work our way up to the top. So <laughs> top water, as everybody knows, is my favorite. So that's going to be my number one. So we'll start with number five. And number five is actually the only fly in this selection that I don't tie. And that is the Orvis Gully Craw. So it's a crawfish pattern. Uh, it's got double lead eyes and it really sinks quickly. And this is definitely one that's probably more of a winter early spring type fly when we're fishing really deep. This one catches a lot of bass, but we also catch the freshwater drum, the Gasper Goo, and occasionally a big buffalo on these. So this is pretty much a go-to for my winter bass fishing. Uh, like I said, I don't tie it. Um, the main reason I don't tie it is because of the claws. Other than that, it, it is a pretty simple pattern. Sometimes it's just easier to buy them. <laughs> and that's how I feel about the gully craw. So, that is gonna be number one on the list or number five, depending on whether we're going from top to bottom, least favorite to most favorite. <laughs> okay, number two on the list may be the fly that's caught more fish for me than any other fly in existence, and that's gonna be a Clouser minnow. This one is uh, Chartreuse and White, and chartreuse and white is probably gonna be my go-to color as well. Do use the clousers in other colors, gray and white, brown and white. You can tie a clouser in just about any color. Uh, you can tie it with lead eyes, you can tie it with bee chain eyes, you can tie it so that it sinks quickly, you can tie it so that it doesn't sink as quickly. And yeah, this is probably, you know, caught more fish, not just bass, but also redfish and other species of fish than any other fly. And uh, so we're gonna call that uh, number four or number two, depending on how you wanna count them on the list, but definitely a go-to. The next one is one of my patterns and I call this one the fat baby. Although it's technically my wife's pattern, <laughs> she kind of came up with the idea and came up with the name. I just tied it and it is a, uh, sort of a slow sinking pattern. So this is one that'll get down once it gets wet. It is one of my guide flies, so it is not a real pretty fly, but it is quick and easy to tie and it definitely catches fish. Looks like a bait fish, you know, I tie it in white. Occasionally I'll tie them in gray or gray and white to kind of look like more of a shad and I have caught quite a few fish, not just bass, but quite a few fish on this pattern. All right, so number three, going from the bottom up, or number two, going from the top down, is gonna be another one of my patterns. I call this one the snake. It is sort of uh, my take on an old fly that was actually called a snake as well, but this one is uh, much, much simpler, much easier to tie. And it's a lot like the Fat Baby. It looks a lot like the Fat Baby. So instead of using the body fur material like say you would tie a Game Changer with, which is what's on the Fat Baby, this is a uh, deer body hair. So loosely packed so that it will soak up water and it will sink, but it's really great because it pushes a lot of water and the rabbit strip tail kind of wiggles around quite a bit in the little turbulence behind that bulky head. So this is a great kind of diving subsurface pattern. And uh, I call it a snake, you know, it's a lot like a lot of different patterns as most flies are. Um, but yeah, this is uh, probably my second favorite 
fly to catch bass on. And once again, you can tie this in a lot of different colors. Um, white's probably my go-to, but we also tie them in pink. We tie them in black. We tie them in brown. You can tie them in olive. Pretty versatile pattern. You can tie in a bunch of different colors, and I've certainly caught a lot of bass on this one. All right, moving along. Number one, <laughs> my top favorite is going to be my Dito popper, formerly known as a flip-flop popper. Um, this is a top water pattern and you know, I'm a top water guy. This is my favorite way to catch bass is on top water. This is also a great fly. You can catch redfish on it. Any fish that you would catch on a top water pattern, this fly will work for. It is another one of my guide flies. It's super easy to tie. You can tie it in a multitude of different colors and because it's like a two part, well, I guess three part fly, you can do a lot of mixing and matching. So yeah, this is probably the one that I tie most often is this green with the white tail. But like I said, you can tie it in all black, all white, all yellow. You can do a combination of, you know, black and white, yellow and white, green and yellow, uh, really versatile fly. And like I said, I've caught a ton of fish on this fly. As a matter of fact, this is the fly in a red with a pink tail that caught the largest fish any of my clients have caught, which is eight and a half pound bass. So yeah, this is my favorite fly. <laughs> and if all things are working the way we want them to work and fish are coming up and hitting the surface, this is definitely the fly that I have on. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in tying any of these flies, I have videos showing me tying all of them, except for that gully craw. I'll leave a link in the description to the tying videos. I've got a whole series of tying videos. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.